it's important to explain that cannabis has been illegal not for scientific reasons, and that we are dealing with a, dealing with a very, very low toxic substance. There is no uh, uh, a documented death because of cannabis in all of human history. Okay, we cannot say this, I suppose, for no substance. Okay, if you drink a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of water, you die. Okay, because you make a declaration of potassium. Sorry, and you and you die. The photomania that is a psychiatric illness that makes the patient to drink a lot of liters of water every day finally kills the patient because he ha it has a heart attack because of the levels of potassium. So in this sense, we can say that cannabis is safer than water. It's a strong affirmation, okay? So it's a very, very low toxic substance. To tell again what I said, yeah, yeah there, is, there is a psychiatric illness uh, called potomania, okay? that in the patient drinks a lot of liters of water every day, okay? Uh, some of these patients make a, 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 get a declaration with the potassium, okay, and has a heart attack and dies. Uh, and it's real, okay? So in, this, in these terms, cannabis is safer than water uh, because there is no lethal dose, okay? You cannot give a quantity of cannabis or THC to a man and uh, to kill him. It's in, it has never happened. And we have to show the different roles of administration, placing them in a clinical context. So we, we cannot say to the patient, okay, if you, will, or if you want to, to benefit of, uh, with cannabis use, you are going to, or you need to smoke a joint. No. We have to talk him about drops, about oil, sublingual, oral, okay, to, to, make, to make it in a, explain it in a medical context. The patient tip C uh, smoked when, when he was young and actually he's not smoking, okay? This, this patient, it's easy to deal with because they have experience with psychoactive effects of cannabis. They, they know what to expect. Most of them have felt the side effects in the past because now that he smoked too much, okay, uh, he had the side effects of our, our intoxic intoxication of, of, of cannabis, and they, and they have felt the side effects in the past. So they know what to expect. It's easy to increase the dose faster, okay, with them. And they have experience with inhalation as a road of administration, so they have less reluctance to use it if it's necessary. The inhalation way, uh, it's, a good, it's a good way when we need a very fast relief of, uh, of the symptoms. For example, uh, in acute pain, okay, or in acute vomiting, that the patient cannot wait uh, 25, 30 minutes, uh, that is the time that uh, you spend uh, with a sublingual uh, road of administration to, to start to, to be effective and uh, um, inhaling okay, with a, vapor, uh, uh, a vaporizer, the effect is quite immediately, uh, as fast as endovenous, okay? It's just seconds. And the patient type D, okay? This is the most dangerous patient, okay? He actually used cannabis, okay, and he wants what, he, what this patient wants really is a paper, okay? It's a medical paper to justify the use of cannabis uh, for the, in the family or in the work, okay? To justify the transfer of cannabis, okay? They thought, okay, if I've got a medical paper and the police told me and I have a, a little quantity of cannabis, I can say, hey, no, this is for medical use, you know, and, okay. Or to justify the growing of cannabis, okay? No, the plants I have, uh, it's for medical reasons, you know, this is a paper, so. Or wants a paper to try to get free from a legal problem that has happened before the consultation. It's common there in Spain, okay, to appear in my consultation, people that has not a pathology very important and suddenly they want to get a paper and explain, oh, you know, next, uh, last week I have a problem with a man and I thought that if I have this paper, blah, 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 blah. 
So this kind of paper we have to identify and just to say that he has no justification. Okay, if this kind of paper suddenly is diagnosed with a terminal cancer or with a multiple sclerosis or something like that, okay, there's no problem to pass. It must be an uh, um, uh, important pathology, okay? Because normally the pathology they present are pain, okay, not treated with opioids, or it's a stress, or it's insomnia, or drugs, or if I don't smoke one joint, I cannot go to sleep. Okay, this is not a medical reason. First consultation, what to check? What is important? Is there a previous experience with cannabis? So we can classify the patient in AV or in CD group. What do they expect from cannabis treatment? This is important because some patients, uh, or some families come to the patient, come to the consultation with the patient. Uh, for example, in a stage four cancer, okay, with metastasis, for all the body, and they, they go there because they have heard that they, if they use cannabis, uh, they can get completely free of cancer, okay? And we have to take these expectatives and to put it in the right level, okay? We have to explain that cannabis can help with the vomiting, with the pain, uh, to help to sleep, to intake, to intake food, but, uh, okay, that uh, uh, doesn't mean that Cannabis in all patients can help to cure cancer, okay? It's, they are big words, so we have to put the patient in the right situation for not to expect too much, okay? Cannabis can help, but uh, it's just uh, another treatment. The first, the familiars and the patient about addiction, brain damage, mental illness. We have to identify these fears and to turn them. The contraindications for cannabis use and the interactions. The contraindications normally are uncontrolled cardiac disease. Why? Because the TSC uh, produces tachycardia, tachycardia, okay, and um, it it's make the the heart to to use more oxygen, okay. Uh, so if we have an arrhythmia not controlled, if we have an um, cardiac arrest or cardiac insufficiency not controlled, okay? Uh, we are going to make, to produce a tachycardia, giving cannabis, and this can uh, get this illness uh, worse. For example, if we have a severe hypotension, okay? You know, we know cannabis make uh, peripheral, produce peripheral vasodilatation, okay? And gets the arterial tension to get down. So if a patient normally uh, has Hypotension, perhaps, he's not going to, to tolerate the use of cannabis. Schizophrenia, another psychosis. Okay, we know that cannabis has a um, very powerful t tendency, okay, to produce a first episode of schizophrenia or psychosis in individuals with predisposition, okay, but uh, the schizophrenia or the, um, or the psychosis must be, okay, uh, in the family or must be in, in, in personal antecedents. So cannabis don't uh, make a, a, healthy, a healthy patient uh, to get with schizophrenia, uh, but has a, a, it's very powerful to, to produce this first episode, okay? By, in the other hand, a lot of, a lot of uh, schizophrenia patients use cannabis, okay? Why? Because uh, cannabis gets the negative symptoms of schizophrenia uh, better, to get better, okay? We have the positive uh, symptoms of schizophrenia and negative symptoms, okay? The positive symptoms that are hallucinations, uh, uh, maniac attitude, uh, get worse, if they smoke cannabis, but uh, negative symptoms uh, that are uh, isolation, depression, uh, they get better, okay? Uh, it is important to, to talk about what, which kind of cannabis the schizophrenia uh, patients use. They normally use hashish or indica varieties, okay? Hashish because it normally has more CBD, that is an antipsychotic molecule, 
and Indica because they get uh, more relaxed and they don't uh, uh, they don't get very uh, uh, with with a lot of euphoria. Normally, this euphoria produced by the sativa uh, varieties uh, can can produce two uh, hallucinations and schizophrenia patients don't want to get with a hallucination. On the other side, we know that cannabis improve the side effects of the antipsychotic medication, okay? So uh, there are two theories of uh, cell medication for to explain why the schizophrenia patients, a lot of schizophrenia patients consume cannabis. So it's a relative contraindication, okay? Pregnancy or feeding, for sure we know that cannabinoids go to the to the babies, okay, when they are uh, into the mother and when they are out of the mother because of the milk, the cannabinoids pass in the, in the milk. And we know that the endocannabinoid system um, uh, regulates uh, all the central nervous system growing, okay? So if we administrate external cannabinoids, we don't know how are we uh, altering this uh, natural process. Age under 21, okay, between 21 and 23, the, the central nervous system is completely development, okay? So if we give cannabinoids under this age, we have to be, to be care, carefully because, uh, okay, the exocannabinoids that we are giving are going to, uh, can alterate the normal de the development of the central nervous system. We don't know nothing, perhaps in 10, 15, 20 years when we have dates uh, because of the use of cannabis under this age, we can talk more about this. Or patients that, that are allergic to cannabis, it's not common, okay, but I have, I have some, some cases of people that when they smoke cannabis, okay, they get with um, uh, vasomotor rhinitis, Okay, or people that we get into contact with the flowers, okay, they have, they get with allergic dermatitis. There are a few cases, but it's, it's one more. What are the interactions? The most important interaction is, are with, with other recreational drugs, in this case, alcohol, okay. We know that cannabis and alcohol have um, cross tolerance, that means that if uh, the patient smoke cannabis, okay, and then drink alcohol, the effects of the drugs uh, get together, but mm, not uh, t uh, too many, uh, with not with, uh, with too many uh, side effects. But if the patient uh, first drink alcohol, okay, and later smoke cannabis, quite for sure he's gonna have a, a lipotemia, okay, or he's gonna feel very, very bad, vomiting, okay. It's just in the order we administrate the drugs. Or interaction with other medication, okay. We're gonna see uh, the most common interaction with medication. With antidepressant, the uh, selective inhibitors of serotonin uptake, THC can increase the effect of fluoxetine, okay. TSE is an antidepressant, and with fluoxetine we have seen that uh, the effects get higher. With tricyclic antidepressant, can be potentiated the effects on hair rate, low blood pressure, and sedation caused by amitriptyline. The anti-inflammatory drugs, like no, no steroid, anti-inflammatory drugs, like indomethacin, acet, uh, acetylsalicylic acid, or aspirin, and other non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs neutralize the effect of THC, okay? The indomethacin significantly reduce the hike of the cannabis and the tachycardia. With the benzodiazepines, they may increase respiratory and brain function depression, as well as enhance the anti-epileptic effect, okay? Both THC and CBD, they, uh, they both are anti-epileptic drugs, okay? And they can potentiate uh, the effect of other medication, antiepileptic medication. In this case, with the benzodiazepines, it's happened, and we see how we have to be careful 
when we treat uh, children with CBD and they are taking clobazam, okay, because the CBD uh, is metabolized in the liver by cytochrome P450 and it's the same uh, cytochrome that metabolizes the clobazam and when they are taking clobazam, the levels of clobazam get high and they get uh, with a lot of sedation, okay, we, and we have to reduce this medication. The beta blockers reduce the heart rate increase associated with THC. In glaucoma, many drugs lower the intraocular pressure and the effect of cannabinoids can potentiate this action. The neuroleptics, THC can neutralize the antipsychotic effect of neuroleptics. We know that THC is pro-psychotic, okay? The opiates increase sedation and analgesia when we are using opiates we start using cannabinoids, we reduce not only the side effects, okay, of the opiate medication, but increase the analgesia, so we can reduce the opiate dose, okay, and we can reduce the morbidity and the mortality associated, associated to, to this drug use. Sympathomimetics, like amphetamines and other sympathomimetics, enhance increased heart rate and blood pressure, okay, be careful with the tachycardia. And theophylline, the metabolism of theophylline is cre increased by THC, so we have to make an adjust of this drug, okay? Uh, we have to, to, to increase this, this drug to be effective. As I said, uh, antiepileptic drugs, THC and CBD, increase the effect of anticonvulsants. So attention to clobazam is important. With antihypertension and antidiabetic medication, well, THC uh, lowers the arterial pr uh, pressure uh, because, as I said, it makes vasodilatation, peripheral vasodilatation, and uh, it gets the glucose okay, down uh, in the blood. So the, blood, the plasma levels of, of glucose decrease when we take cannabinoids. Uh, so people that take this kind of medication quite for sure, okay, uh, they are going uh, in a few weeks to decrease the, the, this drug, these drugs doses. The first experience with cannabis. The first experience with cannabis is very, very important that the patient have a good first experience with cannabis, okay, because if they have a bad experience with cannabis, they are not going to use cannabis anymore, okay. We have a very good drug, very safe drug, and we don't want the patient get with fear about cannabis. Okay, this is important to start the doses very, very, very low. So, what is important in the first experience with cannabis? Ideally, in the presence of someone with experience in cannabis use, can be a familiar, can be a friend of the family. Okay, to 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 guide the the patient about the the, the feelings. Okay is having because of the effects of the psychoactive effects of cannabis. To start with very low doses and increase slowly. In a suitable environment, okay, it can be in the house of the patient, it's better than if it is in a hospital, okay, or in a strange place uh, where the sensibility of the patient can be uh, uh, more alterated than if he is in a, in a no place, like his house with his family, okay? And with nothing to do in the, in the next hours, okay? Because if the patient is gonna get high, okay? It's not a good idea to have the first speed with cannabis in the morning if he has important to do uh, in the afternoon, okay? Which is the dosage? Always start with a very low dose and increase slowly, okay? It's preferable to, to, to spend one week to find the initial dose, okay, or the good dose, that to go, to want to go very, very quickly, and the, uh, and the patient has to have a, a, a bad experience with cannabis. The maximum dose is defined by the tolerability of the patient to side effects, okay. In clinical trials, doses from 2.5 milligrams of THC to 10 milligrams of THC per dose are commonly used, okay. To give these doses, of course, we need to know which concentration has the product that we are using, okay? 
we have not analysis of the of the material we are we are giving we are administering to the patient we cannot know how many milligrams of TEC we are giving okay and this is important to know what are exactly given to the patients the common side effects okay that we can we should explain to the novel users for cannabis that are going to use cannabis for medical purposes we have to explain that they can feel dry mouth it's very common tachycardia hypotension dizziness drowsiness lung irritation when there is combustion but in, in uh, we have to talk to the patient that smoking cannabis is not a, 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 a medical use of cannabis okay because we are irritating the, the lungs. Sometimes when the dose is very high, the patient can feel a anxiety attacks that if we don't know, if we not control, they go to a panic attack. And if we don't control this panic attack, uh, we get to a uh, cannabinoid self-limited psychosis, okay? In a normal patient, this Cannabinoid self-limited psychosis, psychosis just passed when they, when they go to sleep, okay, and in the next morning they are okay. But uh, in patients with predisposition for schizophrenia for, or, or for psychosis, this cannabinoid uh, auto-limited psychosis can get to a schizophrenic episode uh, in, in individuals with predisposition, okay. What do they feel uh, in an overdose of cannabinoids? Okay, if the patients someday just get wrong with the dose, okay, and have get an intoxication. It's gonna feel palpitations, okay, anxiety for sure, paranoia, feeling to die. This is a very very common okay effect. They think they are gonna die, okay, because they 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 feel very 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 bad. In fact. And intoxication for cannabis uh, uh, is one of the worst sensation uh, a person can feel, okay? It's a despersonalization, total despersonalization, feeling of, uh, of imminent die, and feeling of they are going to get crazy, okay? We say, what is the treatment? We don't, for sure we don't, the patient to feel all this, so the titration is very, very important, okay? To increase the dose very slowly which is the treatment in overdose, okay? It's an easy treatment, okay? Water, okay, because first of all, because of sure they are going to get a very, very dry mouth, okay? Water or lemon juice, sugar or sweet, okay? Because in this, in this moment of paranoia, okay, the brain is consuming a lot of glucose, and with this we help to calm this. And the sweet things uh, are anxiogenic, okay? And they they down the, the anxiety. But most important of everything is just to calm the patient and to say it, that it's normal to feel what he's feeling and in uh, with two, three, more four hours, okay, it's going to get better. Okay? And if we can transmit uh, this information uh, to the patient in an efficient way, he's gonna be calm, okay? Okay, you are feeling very, very bad, but it's gonna pass, don't worry, okay? The patient can lie down and resting, and when they wake up, for sure, he's not going to be more of the sensation. Or if it's uncontrolled, okay, we use medication, benzodiazepines, okay? 10 to 20 milligrams of diazepam volume, okay? And we cut the sensation. Which product to use, okay? It is, uh, an interesting item because uh, we have so so many products okay with cannabinoids and I'm not talking only about uh, pharmacy products okay uh, but products that uh, uh, the, the recreational users uh, do okay and, uh, and, uh, and not by uh, med with medical purposes but that we can use for medical purposes, I'm talking about the different ways of extraction of cannabinoids, okay? We can use flowers, we can use mechanical extractions, 
or we can use solvent extractions. The flowers. Uh, Belvocan is the only authorized uh, company in Europe to grow and to sell uh, medical grade cannabis. Okay. They have uh, some varieties. Okay. We have Berrocan with 90% of THC and less than 1% of CBD. Bedrobinol, 13% of THC and less than 1% of CBD. Bediol, that is a 6.5% THC and 8% CBD. As you can see, Bediol is a ratio more or less 1-1, one, one, okay, like Satibex. In, in this case, CBD is important because CBD control the psychoactive effect of THC, okay, and the uh, high CBD uh, species or high CBD uh, types of cannabis uh, are preferred by the patients because they don't want this uh, initial uh, high THC sensation. Okay, CBD controls the THC uh, psychotic effects. We have the bedrolite that is less than 0.3% of THC and 9% of CBD. Okay, it's a only CBD uh, specimen. And Bedica that is 14% THC and less than 1% CBD. And that Bedrocan company announced like a pure indica. Okay, let's see later why it's important to, to identify is the variety where we are using is sativa or is indica. We use flowers for vaporization in capsules, VRL. When we use the flower, we are using all the components, okay? Not only the cannabinoids, but the terpenoids, okay? And the interaction between terpenoids and cannabinoids is very important. We call him entourage effect, okay? Because the real difference between a sativa or a indica is not in the quantity of cannabinoids, but, but in the type of terpenoids they have. And we have different strains to choose, from sativas puras to indica puras and hybrids in the middle, okay? Mixtures between sativas and indicas. The vaporization, here we have the volcano, okay? Uh, it is, is a, a good vaporizer, okay? It's not portable but he has studies of biodisponibility of cannabinoids. Uh, we have portable devices, okay? Uh, when the patient needs to go to some, some place and he feels that he's going to need a dose, a cannabinoid dose. It's as fast as intravenously, okay? So for uh, acute attacks of pain or nausea, it's very, very effective, okay? It's not so easy to calculate the dose we are administrating, but the patient uh, administered himself a dose, okay, with the, with the vaporizer, and in few seconds, few minutes, uh, knows if he needs a new dose or not. He can repeat the dose in a few minutes to control symptoms. Portable devices allow patients to self-medicate anywhere, okay? Okay, it depends on the legal situation to, of consume of cannabis, but uh, with a vaporizer, portable vaporizer, okay, if the patient go to a, a, a good place, okay, and he could use a good technique, okay, no vapor is going to go out, okay? It's much more difficult than if he has to make combustion, okay? Uh, so he gets down the smell, he's very, very practical, practice if the patient has, uh, has enough practice with the, with the device. In fact, nowadays we have get to this situation, okay? This is a mini vaporizer, okay, with a sativa strain, uh, and when you use this uh, mini vap, okay, and, uh, and the battery gets down and the uh, cannabinoids uh, gets down, you just throw it, okay? It's just one use. This is, this is uh, very easy to use and very easy to carry, okay? With flowers, we can use the oral, 
via in capsules. Uh, Israel is a country that uh, has used this this via uh, with very with very successful way. As I said, when we use the flowers, we are using cannabinoids and terpenoids. Okay, this uh, um, this is an image that uh, rela relates to the um, different uh, terpenoids, myrcene, caryophyllene, pinene, umulene, with the effects and with some varieties. Okay, Jack Hero, OJ Cash, White Widow, um, that in the analysis have shown. To, to have this kind of terpenoids, okay? We know that terpenoids has, has effects in the central nervous system, so it's a different terpenoid profile that give us the effect of the cannabis strain. Indica or sativa, okay? We know that indica is better for pain. We know that sativa is better for vomiting, but in some cases, where uh, indica, it was supposed to work better, a sativa works better, and in the cases where a sativa is supposed to work better, our indica works better. So this is the theory, but the, the experience of the patient is, that was, is going to say, to tell us which variety is better for the patient. Uh, okay, indica is better to get relaxed, to get at home, okay, listening music, and sativa is more uh, euphorizant, okay, it's a lot of energy. For sure, if we have a patient with a depression that is in bed and doesn't want to go out of bed, we are not going to give him an indica, okay, but for sure he's not going to, be, to get out of bed. And if we have uh, someone with uh, chronic pain and with a lot of anxiety, okay, we are not going to give him sativa because for sure we are going to to get him to get to an anxiety attack. The indica is muscle relaxant, it's ansiolytic. Um, my experience said that they are better than sativas for pain, except in fibromyalgia associated with chronic fatigue syndrome. Okay, in these cases, a uh, um, higher percentage of sativa, okay, 60, 70, 80% of sativa, and 20. 25% of indica, it, it works better, okay? It's good for depression when associated to anxiety disorders. Sativa varieties have an energizer effect. It's better for nausea and vomiting. Better for nausea and vomiting induced by chemotherapy, okay? It's better for appetite stimulation. And in some types of pain, they act in a better way than indicas. Yeah, as I talk, in fibromyalgia, we can find this. Okay, let's talk about extraction, because as far as I know, now in your country, you are allowed to, uh, to recommend uh, products that are in the pharmacy and that they are all uh, extract. We have the hashish polling, okay, that is uh, the the normal presentation of the, is the base for quite all the rest of presentations. We have the isolator or the last technique that is using in mechanical extraction is rosin touch. Okay, you have the hashish, po hashish polling, typically from Morocco, okay, you have the flowers, okay, you have the tamis, and you get the three combs, okay, that is this powder. For example, in Israel, they take this powder, okay, and they they wake and they put they weigh the doses and they put in the, in, into the capsules, okay. This is a good way of administration via oral, okay, of a mechanical extraction, and with high concentration of THC. If you make this from hemp, okay, what you are going to administrate is only CBD, okay. So it's an interesting way. We have the isolator, okay, that is make an extraction with uh, water, uh, with ice, okay, and removing, passing in as tamis. For sure, the patient is not gonna use this presentation, okay? You have to dilute this, normally in, in olive oil, okay, to administer it in drops. Or rosin touch, okay? We have, the we have the flour, and with head and pressure, we can get the resin to get out around the flour, and 
we can use it um, diluting okay or vaporizing this is a very good technique because you use no solvent at all and you are getting pure the resin pure okay solvent extractions we have olive oil uh, RSO or Rick Simpson oil Bhutan honey oil or CO2 critical extraction. Rick Simpson oil, as you know, uh, is, is, is obtained with ethanol, okay, or with naphtha, but it's better with ethanol. Um, Dr. Arno Hasekamp from Holland um, make a very interesting article that we, I show you later. Uh, he analyzed the different solvents, okay, and the different results. In olive oil, it's, it's easy, you just need to put olive oil with the bats, okay? And in the, in this, uh, in the experience of Dr. Hathekam, he heat the oil during two hours, okay? But yeah, recreational users just let the olive oil for one week, okay, or two weeks, uh, and just get the, the olive oil, and you can catch all the cannabinoids and all the terpenoids, uh, and, you, and you lose nothing at all, okay? The problem is that it's not so concentrated like the rest of the extract, so the patient needs a higher quantity, okay, to get the same dose that if you use extract. This is the article I was talking about, okay, cannabis oil, chemical evaluation for an upcoming cannabis-based medicine. Dr. Arno Hasekam, it was published in Cannabinoids 2013. Okay, Rick Simpson oil. I think this, this is extraction we, we most used. Uh, as I said, I'm the president of uh, uh, users of cannabis for medical purposes. Okay, there in Spain, it's called THC112. And for sure, we don't, go, we don't give flowers to our patient. We give uh, Rick Simpson oil dilute in olive oil, okay? We make extraction from hemp to get the CBD or from grass with marijuana to get the THC, okay? We have ma many types of Rick Simpson oil from sativas, from indicas, from hybrids, okay? And from hemp. Who is doing the extraction? Someone that works for us. A uh, chemical, chemic, chemical, but um, now, 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 you have to understand that in Spain, cannabis is illegal, okay? In Spain, actually, um, you can use cannabis in a private place, okay? You can grow cannabis if it's for your use, okay? But medical use of cannabis is not allowed yet. Now, now, our association, we have an association that is called THC 112. The Spanish law said that if uh, people that use cannabis get in a club, okay, in an association, in a private association, uh, they can use cannabis and they can get, get the cannabis uh, together, okay? You can get the cannabis together going to the black market or you can get the cannabis together growing, okay? And in, in this moment, there are more than 800 associations of this type in Spain, okay? Our association is focused in the medical use of cannabis. So uh, we don't give flowers to the patient, we give extraction. But extraction made by ourselves, okay? Because in this moment, there is no Spanish company that makes this extraction. There is no Spanish company uh, that uh, allows products for medical use because in this moment, Spain has no uh, uh, cannabis, medical cannabis law as you has. Okay, so I think you, 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 should, um, you should do a, a good work because uh, in this moment you are more allowed to use cannabis than many countries in Europe. Yes? Yeah? From, from our cultivations. We make all the process and we analyze for sure. Now, 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 there are no companies in Spain producing cannabis. Cannabis in Spain is illegal. Okay, so we are in a, a legal situation. There is no a law that regulates, okay? There is no a law that regulates what we are doing, 
but what we are, we are doing is not illegal, okay? We can, we can do it because we are not uh, jumping the law, so we are in a, a legal situation. Because we make the flowers. We have cultivations. We have the cultivation, we have the extraction, we analyze, and later we give to the patient. The seed, yeah, for, sometimes for seeds, sometimes for clones. There are. No, 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 okay. I, I understand, I understand. That, that's what I explained that now in this moment in Spain, we are working in a, a legal situation, not illegal but not legal because we need a law to regulate. It's a hard, so I said, now you are in a very good situation, okay? You, you have to, to, uh, to approve this situation you have because now you can act uh, calm, okay? We are moving in a um, moving place, okay? But okay, we, can, we help the patient, that is important. Okay, when we work with wheat, okay, we get uh, this kind of, of rixins on oil, we get to 71% of THC. We work with a laboratory ca called Fundación Canna, okay, that is in Barcelona. When we work with hemp, we get the CBD, and now we are extracting rixins on oil about 28, 29% of CBD. This allows us to make different combinations, okay, of the different rixins on oils, and to get a ratio 1-1, one, one, ratio 1-2, one, ratio 2-1 of CBD, THC, depending on, on the patient, or, the, or we want to give to the patient. BHO, the method of extraction is but, uh, for butane honey oil, is simple, okay, you put into this kind of cylinder uh, the weed, okay, and you pass gas, liquid gas, okay, that put the cannabinoids out, and when you evaporate the gas, you get this beautiful kind of extraction, okay, that you can dilute, dilute in olive oil. CO2 super extraction uh, is the best way to extract cannabinoids, but needs a very, very uh, complicated uh, ma uh, machines, okay, so you need a technique just for make the, this kind of extractions, okay? In the United States, and here, uh, more in the United States, um, a lot of mini BAP, okay, have charges of cannabinoids making with this kind of extraction. So if you use isolator, if you use rixinson oil, if you use butan honey oil, or if you use CO2 super extraction, uh, you should dilute the product in olive oil to, to make a correct administration to the patient. Okay, I'm gonna talk to you about two practical cases, okay? They are not real cases, but uh, they are hypothetical cases, but they are very, very common, okay? Perhaps later in five or six years, when the medical use of cannabis in Spain uh, is authorized, I can present you real cases, okay? Okay, male, 75 years old, chronic pain not controlled, hypertension, uh, diabetes mellitus, type two. He starts with one drop sublingual each eight hours, okay? This is the, the way I always medicate my patients, always with one drop and increasingly slowly. And increase one drop per day of an indica rixinson oil diluted in olive oil, okay? It's 1.33 milligrams of THC by drop, okay? How do you calculate this? Okay, you have the Rixinson oil, you have the analysis of the Rixinson oil, okay? And you know in one gram, okay, it's 70% it's, uh, of THC, you know that in one gram of Rixinson oil, there is say uh, 700 milligrams of THC. So you dilute in 10 milligram, in 10 milliliters, or only 50 milliliters, you know you can calculate theoretically, okay, theoretically, uh, how, which quantity of milligrams of THC is there in each drop. Yeah, uh, can I just uh, finish this? Who? Who is making the analysis? 
Yes, I told you. Fundación Cana, in Valencia. Analyzing since yes, 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 because yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. If now, nah, if you look for Fundación Cana, you you will. Okay. So 1.33 milligrams of TSC by drop, and at seven drops, okay, he feel hypotension. Okay, he feel low glucose levels, but he has no pain. Okay, we have to adapt the doses. Reducing antihypertensive and anti-diabetic medication, hypertension controlled, glucose levels controlled, no pain. But how we were using pure Indica, okay, in three weeks treatment, the patient reduces no uh, steroid anti-inflammatory drugs antihypertensive medication, anti-diabetic medication, and a sleep inducer that he takes. But he feels too much relaxed, doctor, okay? I feel okay, but too much relaxed. I, I don't want to go out to the street because I'm really too, too relaxed, okay? In the morning and after lunch, he changed the pure indica preparation to an hybrid preparation, 50% sativa, 50% indica. We get no pain and the activity of the of the patient increase. Okay, practical case two. Female, three years old, 15 kilograms, Dravet syndrome. Okay, 20, 13 sessions a day, antiplatic drugs cocktail not effective. He starts with one drop of hemp oil enriched with CBD at 15%, five milligrams of CBD per drop. There are, as you know, uh, CBD is not illegal, okay, so you can buy CBD in the internet. There are a lot of companies, okay? The first one that they start was Endoka, okay? And now there are a lot of them. They make extraction from hemp plants to get the CBD, okay? They dilute normally in hemp oil because they, they like to use better than, than olive oil. Uh, and you have, you can use a standardized product, okay? Cinco milligrams of CBD per drop. Normally, the in the United States, the um, uh, pediatric uh, neurologists, neuropediatrics, they use uh, doses about 0 0.5 milligrams of CBD per kilogram per day. In the Epidiolex study, okay, with CBD purified, they use, they start with five milligrams of CBD per kilogram per day. So it's 10 times the, the initial dose they use in the United States. So it's very relative, okay? We normally use, start with one milligram of kilogram, of kilogram per day. Um, best control, it gets down to three, five sessions a day at six milligrams of kilogram per day, 90 milligrams a day or safe drops each eight hours. Necessary to reduce the clobazam when drowsiness appears. Addition of low doses of THC, two milligrams each eight hours, control it completely the state source. We know that when CBD alone doesn't work, a little quantity of THC make the difference, okay? Okay, resuming. We have to identify the kind of patient we have in front of us, provide to the patient and the familiars all the information they need about toxicity, side effects, route of administration, dosage, and others to evaluate the contraindications and the interactions, choose the right products, this is fundamental, okay? Choose the right product, the right way, and the pathology, explain how to treat an intoxication, and we need to know how to treat with drugs if necessary, as I say, benzodiazepine works, and thank you very much for your time. It was a pleasure to talk to you.